Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. Namaste. This is Jim Oblivion from the Pirates on the Ground Productions. Coming at you live from Rochester, New York. This is my random vlog series where I'll be rambling on about various topics I've experienced in my life. Thanks for dropping in, and away we go. Episode 1, Dark Places. In my point of view, everyone has mental issues. I mean, to a certain degree, who's to say, who's saying, who's not, you know. So, in that, I'm going to talk about a couple of different instances where I know I could be considered insane. I even thought to myself, that is insane. I mean, you know, how did I lose control to the point where I was insane, you know? So, first one, I'm going to cover um, a drunken rage, and then I'm going to talk about psyching myself up for football. So, as far as drunken rage, and through other vlog topics, you learn more about me and where I came from and what I did. So originally I'm from a small town in Kentucky and we'll call that town Mville. Let's just say, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, around the time I left, it may have been 60,000 people. Um, the town I was from and the county itself in general was a dry county. So that means they didn't sell alcohol and you'd have to go to the next county which was like a 30 minute drive away, get alcohol and come back. And what's funny about it is this place where we would go the next county over, as soon as you hit the county line, there were six or seven um, liquor stores with beer, liquor on the side of the road. I mean, right across the county line. Um, also along with that, in my family, I worked in an establishment, we considered it a, a juke joint. I worked in a place where I was a bartender at 14. You know, basically people would come up to me, give me the money, I go get a beer or whatever they ask for, you know, whatever, a half pint of alcohol was, six dollars or something like that. I just go get it and give it to them. So we had a whole house that was gutted out so you could, it was gutted out but you know, it had uh, picnic tables, not picnic tables, but playing card tables and stuff like that in each room where you could just sit down, have your drink, whatever, you know, you had a little dance floor, music was playing and stuff like that, and you hang out. So basically, I was a um, bartender at 14. So getting back to the drunken rage, I, I just want to give you a little background about where I'm from. So, um, to get with the drunken rage, let's see, there's another town outside of my small town. Remember, my town, M Mville, is about 60,000 people. There's a town west of our a small town, west of where Mville was, that may have been half of half of half the population. And let's call that E Town. So in town, I guess you could say they may have had a thousand, maybe two thousand people. There was always a rivalry between the two places when, in effect, if you were the young people, you know, where you hang out. So if you were in Mville, you might see one or two people from E-Town. And, you know, nobody would mess with them because, you know, they, it's just two of them from E-Town. They basically knew they were outnumbered by people from uh, Mville, so they wouldn't, you know, act up or nothing like that. Because if you act up, then you gotta get checked. You know, there's, there's people in place that are not gonna let you come to our town and act a fool, you know, so. This particular rage I wanna go, that I had, I wanna get into where I felt you know, looking back at it the day after and what have you, reflecting on what happened, you know, it was like I lost control. I was like, whoa, you know, I was out of control. So what happened is we had a party at the juke joint. I think I was off. I, was, I wasn't working at this time, but I was still hanging out there because this is my 
family's establishment. Uh, it, it's like, um, it basically is a bootlegging joint. So it was run by my family. That's how I got to be a bartender at 14. Um, but like I said, I was off. I was drinking with my cousin, and I'm not really the drinker. I, at, at, at 14, I think 14 or maybe 15 is when I started to mess around with the newbies, if you so to say. But um, I did try my hand at I did try my hand at drinking because you know it was there. I worked at the establishment. For me, it was free if I wanted it. I wasn't really a, a big drinker or anything, so I could get what I wanted. So this particular night. Uh, my cousin and I, we were drinking a mixture that we like to call Heckle and Jekyll. And basically what that was, it was a mixture of a shot of gin and a shot of uh, Wild Irish Rose. I'm not sure if you know what Wild Irish Rose wine is. It's a wine that's about $2 a bottle. And how we, how we identify it is we say the hard angles drink it. And what I mean by hard angle is... You know, those guys, that they'll scrounge $2 together to go get a bottle of Wild Irish Rose because the bottle, one bottle, you know, between two people will get you wasted. So we were drinking this Heckle and Jekyll, which had the Wild Irish Rose wine in it and the gin. And it was just a party going on. We were standing outside of the house. And, uh, you know, there's people hanging around. Most of the people are from Emville. And this particular time, there were about 10 people from E-Town. So, again, like I said, when there was one or two of them, you know, they wouldn't step out of line because they know people from Enville would check them. And this particular night, they it was like 10 people. So, you know, to a certain degree, I guess they kind of felt like they had a little backup if they wanted to fight. At least they would have a decent chance with 10 as opposed to like two. So we're standing outside, and I know I am ripped because, again, I don't drink a whole lot, but I know we finished off, at least my cousin and I, we finished off a half pint of gin and a fifth of the Wild Irish Rose mixture together. My cousin probably wasn't feeling the effects, but I was ripped. We're standing outside, standing on the porch, and you can see the guys how people are separated. People from Enville are just standing around in one group of people talking, hanging out, laughing, having a good time. You can hear music from inside. Uh, and then there were people from E-Town. They were doing their same, they're doing the same thing. They had a little group, they were standing over in the driveway, close to some cars, and they were doing their same little thing, you know, having a good time just standing there, hanging out, you know, whatever they bought from inside, they were just kind of standing out and drinking. It was a nice little party going on. Well, getting into the dark places, I started to get agitated because there was one or two guys from E-Town that were sitting on or leaning on cars in the driveway. So, Someone from inside came out and told me, hey, just don't lean on the cars. You know, it's cool to hang out, do whatever, just don't lean on the cars. Like I said, it was probably three guys that were just leaning on the cars. Well, one guy wouldn't get off the car. He was just still laid on the car. So I'm just standing here, and again, I'm ripped. And something in my head, it was just like, this guy is disrespecting you. He's disrespecting you. Why is the guy still just leaning on the car? Like... You know what the hell? What are you doing, dude? So I, I don't know. It, it had to be either a psychotic experience, or I heard voices. But someone was like, "Why is this guy still in the car?" Somebody, you know, you somebody, you gotta check him. He's from E Town. He's in Mville, and he's disrespecting you. Not thinking or caring about how many people they have with them. The next thing, you know, I'm lunging at this guy. So I'm lunging at him, and we roll over into the street, and when I'm on top of him, I start punching him. Um, I think I got off about six, six punches. And somewhere around the fourth, 
I realized he wasn't there and I was punching the ground. Again, like I said, I was ripped. So I guess like two or three shots, I actually just hit the concrete because, you know, either he rolled out of the way they pulled him. I don't know. It was just, he was there one second. I was punching and I was hitting him in the face and the next second I'm punching the ground and he was gone. So it was like, you know, of course, when you get two people together, people, they, the crowds, they break it up, pull everybody apart and what have you. And so they're trying to calm me down. Cousins and really, I can't tell you who had me, who was holding me back or whatever. It was just a group of people around me holding me back. And I'm kind of breathing heavy, you know, you, you, the adrenaline is going at this point. And somehow, the guy that I was fighting, he had went down the street, he was down the street, and he had a group of people around him holding him back, and like, you know, he was getting fired up, like, oh no, let me go, let me go. So I was like, what? This guy, this guy wants, you know, and I'm, again, psychotic rage. I'm like, what? This guy, so I'm starting, I'm walking down that way. So my cousin that, I was drinking with, I look and I see him. So let me see, let me, I'm gonna try to orientate this. To my right, down to my right, I'd say about 30 yards was the guy from E-Town and he was being held back by his crew. About 30 yards to my left, I see my cousin walking around a car like trying to sneak around and he has like a big stick like a baseball bat but it was just like some actually it may have been a broomstick he's sneaking around a car like he's gonna uh, Shanghai surprise these guys you know come from the side and do something like that so when I see my cousin with the stick I ran down there I grabbed this stick out of my cousin's hand and I ran towards the crowd of guys and I just swung and everybody dissipated except for the guy that was all riled up. And I think at that time he may have, you know, how you turn you, you turn it back. And all I know is that stick flew everywhere. <laughs> One whack, it, you know, it's, it, it was flying everywhere. And then a group of people grabbed me. But they were, I remember saying they were family members at this time. And they were telling me, calm down, calm down, calm down. So, again, it was like a, a blind rage of, uh, you know, it's just like, it was psychotic to, to the point where I didn't know what I was doing uh, at the time. You know, I'm, I'm reflecting back now, but also the following morning, the following morning, hungover, I'm at home, somebody's knocking on the door. I'm like, what the hell, what the hell, you know, hungover. Somebody just keeps knocking, like, damn, you know, somebody, you, you knock on the door, they don't answer the door, you go away. But for whatever reason, someone just kept knocking on the door. So I get up, go check the front door, and it's a guy who was at that fight. He's from Emville. He was at that fight. Apparently, what had happened was, and again, blind rage, uh, when I took the broomstick handle from my cousin I was chasing the guy around the car that part that night I don't remember it happening I was chasing him before I actually hit him with the stick and in frustration because he kept you know the side of a car when the guy goes to the right you go to the left type thing keep away out of frustration I hit the car with the the, the broomstick and it left that imprint dent in the fender of this guy's car and he's here the next day you know so he can put in an insurance claim or whatever so I'm talking to him like what I didn't do that because I didn't know you know it was just like it was a blind fit of rage it's like I didn't know so 